Well, hey there, my friend. It's David. Welcome or welcome back to Cross Fitness, helping men and women get in the best spiritual shape in their lives one workout at a time. Quick thought in this video that I'm calling our three mile per hour God. Wow, where does that come from? Well, I was listening to a version devotion this morning by Rick Warren, who pointed out that um, a Japanese theologian had written a book called Our Three mile per hour God and talked about how God had um, chosen to walk with us in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, when the Bible says, you know, the Bible talks about God condescending to become a man. I mean, he really did. I mean, Jesus, creator of heaven and earth and all powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God, part of the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, Trinity, all right, he, he comes into the world and he slows himself down to three miles per hour, the speed at which most people walk, right? And I was thinking about that before I turned the camera on, you know, uh, the first messianic promise in my view, in my opinion, is in Genesis chapter one at creation where God said, let there be light and there was light. I believe this is the first messianic promise, everybody. Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world, right? And if you fast forward all the way to the book of Revelation, and we see a new heavens and a new earth and a new Jerusalem and all that, there is no sun. And the Bible says the lamb is the light. You know, in creation, the sun wasn't created for, you know, a couple of days later, right? And so if that's true and God is light, as Jesus said, well, light, the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. Who knows, perhaps God lives in that domain of the speed of light, you know? Um, it's a big thought, but when he came to earth, he slowed it way down to three miles per hour so he could walk with us. Wow. Reminds me of James 5.16. No, that's not James 5.16. Uh, it is... Um, well, it's the verse that says, walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Uh, something 516, forgive me. <laughs> but anyways, walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And that connected me to Psalm 1, verse 1 through 3. And it talked, you know, we have to walk. We have to walk. And Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the seat, way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers, but is delighted in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. And then it goes on to say, he'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water, bears its fruit in season, whatever he does prospers. The point is we can choose where we walk, how we walk and with whom we walk with. And I think that's the message of Psalm 1.1. I think that's the message of Galatians 5.16. That's it, Galatians 5.16. Walk in the spirit and won't fulfill the lust of the flesh or gratify the desires of the sinful nature, another translation says. And this invitation to walk with Jesus, you know, as he walked this earth and he walked with man and he walked with the guys on the road to Emmaus. And he walked everywhere he went. This is God in a body walking at the speed of man, three miles an hour. And I, think, I just think it's fantastic. I think it's an extraordinarily superb idea to think about and ponder and muse over and meditate on today as you go into your work day. So think on these things. God, the three mile per hour God. Hmm. Well, I hope that intrigues you a little bit anyway. For now, I'm David U. Virtual Mentor. Remind you that I'm always for you. I'm never against you. Have a wonderful day.